Hi, I'm Dr. Jamil Sayaj. And on this podcast, we're going to talk about some deep stuff. I'm here to tell you that you're amazing. And often, the only person who can't see that is you. No matter who you are, what you do, or where you're from, there's greatness in you. Let's talk about it. Hey everyone, this is Dr. Jamil Sayedge and welcome to the Transformation Starts Today podcast. Today, I have a special episode for you. Several years ago, my friend Trevor Harris of the Your Health Class podcast interviewed me and we talked all things relationships. And a few months back, I had this guy from my community reach out to me. He was going through a lot of hard times in his relationship and he asked me if I had anything I could share with him. And I remembered this podcast in the moment and I said, you know what I do? And I shared it with him. And within a day, he got back to me saying that the podcast really turned everything around for him and it extremely was extremely helpful. And so I thought about it and I said, wow, I'd love to share this with my community. It could probably help a lot more people. And so I reached out to Trevor and with his blessing, I'm sharing it with you today. Please enjoy it. Take notes, apply, apply, apply. And your relationship, first and foremost with yourself and with others will change before your very eyes. Today's conversation is called Your Relationship Starts With You. Enjoy. What's poppin'? Welcome to your health class, the show about helping you lose fat, ditch your comfort zone, and then we're changing our generation. As always, I'm Trevor, health and nutrition coach. And with me in the studio, our first returning guest. But I can't tell you who it is yet. You're going to have to listen to the intro first. I took my turmeric shot this morning, so I'm feeling pretty swell. Yeah. I've been focused on my health. Yeah. I've been tossing hundred dollar bills down with some bros. Yeah. Limo tin windows, baby. I can't kiss and tell. Passive in my head, but it's not negative. Spewing on your tray. Please keep your sentiments, cause I don't need the energy you're giving off on settling. Maybe I should let them in. This shit is my medicine. Wait. How are you guys doing today? I'm so excited for this. This is an episode I've been looking forward to for a while. Okay, I- I'm just going to spoil it. Dr. Jamil Syed. Me and him have been, like we talked about in the first time he came on, me and him have known each other for a while. We've been back and forth. And this guy is just so full of awesome information. He's out there just helping all these leaders, high performers, great people up-level their life. And I'm so excited to have him back on the show today. So welcome to the show, Jamil. Thank you so much, Trevor. This has been uh, a long time in the making, and I'm excited <laughs> to be back with you and excited for everyone who's tuning in, and let's have a good time. Yeah, so I got so excited to introduce you, I didn't even tell everybody about the topic yet. So today, we're talking about relationships. And relationships, I mean, you can't go through life without them. And so we're going to be talking about like some key relationships you should have why they're so important to your health and just well-being in general and like some actionable stuff you can do to cultivate better relationships. But before that, like give people a little, little bit of an intro, Jamil, because it's been a little bit since they, since you've been on the show. Yeah, absolutely, man. So again, thank you for having me and for everyone tuning in live and to, or tuning in rather, and then whenever, whenever they hear this. So I'm Dr. Jamil Sayaj. I'm a life and business coach and relationship coach, which is kind of where the topic's coming from, and also a licensed naturopathic doctor. And I work with leaders and high performers from around the world, all walks of life. Been really blessed to do that for about 16 years now to help them create an extraordinary life without regret. You know, they show up with their biggest goals, their dreams, their challenges around their business, their mindset, their relationships, their health, their spirituality. It really is that full spectrum of the human experience and we dive deep in conversation and by helping you see your world differently you start showing up differently you start showing up as the husband the father the leader the mom the 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 wife all these different roles that you play the parent the child you show up as powerfully as you can and once you do that your results go through the roof your experience of life deepens and you actually are happy and fulfilled i find one of the biggest you know um traps that we fall into i'll be happy when And I think we talked about that the first time, but this idea that I'm kind of putting off the happiness, the fulfillment, all these good things, because I'm creating this box that I'm jumping myself into and saying, 
once these happen, then I can be happy. And oftentimes clients will tell me at the end of our agreement, maybe six months, a year later, you know, I came in wanting this, whatever the, the business, the money, the whatever. And yeah, I got that. But the best things I got had nothing to do with what I thought I wanted. <laughs> I actually love myself now. I'm actually happy. I actually have a great relationship with my partner. Like, or it was already pretty good and it's so much better now. I believe in myself again. Like, those things to me are the infinitely more valuable because you know, the money comes and goes, the stuff comes and goes, but who you are never changes. And so as you develop that, it's, it's, ne- it's a next level improvement. And so- <laughs> yes. Well, it's like that right there is... We tell ourselves, oh, we'll have time for this later. And if you tell tell yourself we have time for relationships later, like that's not how this works. Is Mm -hmm. the relationships in your life come first. Mm. And so in your coaching and stuff, where do you put the importance of relationships, whether it be any sort of relationship? We're talking uh, romantic, family, friends, business. Mm Mm-hmm. Where would you put that importance? Yeah. So I, I, I wouldn't put it in the like a hierarchy. I'd say more it's kind of like side by side. But there is one aspect I think that's the hierarchy. Your most important relationship is your relationship with yourself. After that, then it's kind of a side by side. Your family, your, your intimate relationship, your friends, your business colleagues. But without that relationship with yourself, you don't have the foundation necessary to really create that solid ground to stand on. You know, there's that expression, if you don't love yourself, you really can't love somebody else. Same kind of idea. You know, you have to have that groundedness first in order to create a stable relationship. There are people who do it and they don't love themselves, but they have a lot of challenges throughout their relationship. They have a lot of insecurities that come up. They have a lot of attachments that maybe they're not even consciously aware of. And it all stems from not necessarily knowing themselves and being themselves. And so I'd always start there. So start with finding out who you are, like your core values, and then trying to grow relationships from there rather than grow relationships and then try and figure out who you are. Yeah, because I I found that – can you – there we go. It froze for a second. I find that most people walk around life wearing a mask, and the mask is saying basically, who do I need to be to be accepted? Who do I need to be to be loved? Who do, I, who do I need to be to be normal, to be good enough? All these kind of things. And the problem when it comes to relationships is if I'm wearing this mask and you meet me as I'm wearing this mask and then you get to know me as I'm wearing this mask, you don't know me. You know my mask. And so then if you get into a relationship with me and it's boyfriend, girlfriend or husband, wife, if it goes on long enough and at some point what do you hear? Like the whole cliche of, oh, you changed. It's not that I changed. It's that I finally felt comfortable to be myself. It's just that I never showed you who I actually <laughs> was. And that's why that can lead to some problems. And so same thing with friendships. You know, if people give you love and they respect you and they appreciate you, but you feel like you're living a lie and you feel like you're not being authentic and you're not being you, then what are they appreciating? What are they respecting? Not you. They're respecting the mask. They're respecting the persona. So that's why my invitation is always come from authenticity. Be you. Because the right people that are meant to be in your life, the people that – and some people aren't meant to be in your life forever. Some people are in your life for a time and that's beautiful too. But the people that are meant to come into your life, stay in your life for however long, they're going to recognize you and be attracted to you based on who you're being, the energy you're putting out. But if you're not being you, if you're pretending to be with society or your family or your community thinks you're supposed to be, that to me is a losing strategy. And that's why you get people who throughout their life, they might achieve a certain degree of success, let's say financially or materially in a company, whatever. But if they're wearing that mask the whole time, something seems off. Something they'll say, you know, something's missing. I'm not really sure what it is. And the truth of the matter is the thing that's missing is themselves. Like they're the thing that's not in their life and they're not aware of it because it's so obvious that you can't see it, you know, because it's always present. But once they realize, wow, you know, you're right. I'm acting a certain way because I think I'm supposed to. I'm acting a certain way because I'm trying to get something from other people. And when I can finally step into my own authenticity and self-love and radiate that, 
not only do I enjoy my life more, but other people who actually love me for me want to be around me. Yes. Oh, what this makes me think of is like the typical situation. So you have like two people. One's me, and then one's like, let's just say a friend from high school. And so we graduate high school, then I don't see you for a couple years. And so I'm going about my life, I'm doing my things, but who I was in high school was not who I am now. And especially like, say you start going on this whole growth path. And so now you're growing, you're going to the gym, you're changing your mindset, really up leveling your life. And then you see, you run into that person and a couple years later, they're like, wow, you've really changed. And whether they like that or not, that's a whole nother story. That's just their mindset. But you get that response of you changed. But what it sounds like you're saying is it's not necessarily you, like, obviously, yes, you changed, but it sounds like more you stepped into who you truly are as a person. Well, I, I want to make a distinction there. Because I was using it in a different context. I think it's oh, not, yeah. it's not right. completely different from what you just said, but there's nuances to it. In that type of example that you just shared, if you and I went to high school together and then 10 years went by and we didn't talk and we didn't see each other, and then we bump into each other and we decide, how about we go get some food and we hang out? Because we were friends 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. But a lot happens in 10 years. And you know, you do some soul searching, you get into certain aspects of life that maybe you weren't into when you were younger. And that, that uh, shapes you, it impacts you, it influences you and in how you show up. Your personality changes a little bit or a lot, depending on the, the person. And so, yeah, you might have changed. And the only constant in life essentially is change. Like you're going to change. <laughs> um, in that experience, maybe for who you were in high school, that person was a good fit for you. Now, given where you're at, maybe they're not. And that's okay. It's not a problem unless we make it a problem. In the relationship side, like intimate relationship, I meant that more if I have never shown you who I really am out of fear. Oh, if I act like me, she won't like me, right? In my, in my situation. If I act like myself, I tell myself she won't like me. She'll judge me. She won't accept me, all these kind of things. So I need to put on the facade that I am some other way. And I act like that and it's a little bit exhausting because I have to, it's like a lie. I have to keep it up. I have to keep reminding myself to act a certain way that's not natural to me, let's say. And then eventually, maybe we've been together for a couple months, a year, five years, 10 years at some point, maybe I start to realize, you know what? I'm sick and tired of like living this lie. So then I start acting like me. But let's say I wasn't somebody, as an example, let's say I'm a husband who's not very, it's not that I'm not, I don't choose to be, let's say, very outgoing. And I don't choose to, let's say, surprise my partner too often. But let's say that was the facade I was putting on. So I was surprising her all the time and I was taking her places and I was doing all this stuff to, you know, live to make her smile. And then all of a sudden I just stopped doing that because I, I, I tell myself, you know what, this has been exhausting. That's not really me. I'm going to go back to like in all my other relationships not surprising her at all and going back to, you know, just being me. Well, that's not what she signed up for. And it's, and what I mean by that, not that you need to do those things, but that that's what you were portraying. Like that's who she fell in love with. It kind of comes with the package. Like that's who you were being. And so if you stop doing that, all of a sudden it's like the, I don't even know you anymore. It's the, you've changed. And when I say, it's not that you've changed, it's that you've been, you're just going back to who you were. It's kind of a play on words and language. You did change, but the thing is, for you, you're kind of reverting back to your true self. But for her or him, whoever's listening to this, your partner is now different than you know them to be because you never met their true self, right? And so I make that distinction between if you're going to be basically living a lie and wearing the mask, yeah, people are going to tell you at some point if you stop wearing it, you seem different. Or like, who's this guy? I don't know who this is. But in a relationship with friends, yeah, the same thing can apply. But usually it's not like that. Usually there's less pressure in with friendship than relationship and with intimate relationship. And so most people would be themselves, but they can still change. you know. Or one person changes more than the other. I've had friends that are awesome guys, love them to death. 
but in their own life, in their world, they're not that ambitious. And there's nothing wrong with that. But they're very happy just kind of going through the motions. Every day is kind of the same, not really exerting themselves, not stretching, not growing, not learning. That's not the life I choose. Like I like to do all that stuff. And so I surround myself with people that do that. Now, every now and then I hang out with those friends and I enjoy seeing them. But I can see that, you know, we're on two different life paths right now. And if, just because we're on a different path, there's nothing wrong with that. And so uh, I'll pause there because I feel like there was a, I do a lot at you right there. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you're good. It's just making me think of like, so that's why, or that's one of the big reasons why it's so important to pay attention to who you're around. Because if you're around these people that, and there's nothing wrong with not having that ambition. It's just what you want out of life. But say you're somebody that's happiest when they're very ambitious and going after things, you're not going to be able to live that fulfilled life and have your mask off and be your authentic self if you're hanging around these people because inevitably you're going to start picking up their habits, their behaviors, putting on the masks that they're wearing or putting on masks to fit in with them. Yeah, it's, and, it's something to – please continue. I'm sorry. Oh, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, just something to keep in mind also. Simple rule of thumb. In general, the people that you're meant to be around, it feels effortless to be with them. It doesn't – when you're with a really good friend or a bunch of really good friends and you're hanging out, you're having dinner, you're, you're shooting the shit, you're just talking somewhere, you're just having a good time. It doesn't feel like work. It doesn't feel like effort. You're just enjoying yourself. You lose track of time. It flies by. When you're in a relationship with somebody and you're in love and you're loving their presence and you want to be with them all the time. Now, that doesn't mean that there aren't challenges. That doesn't mean there aren't moments where you might be with your boyfriend, girlfriend, fiance, spouse, and you're like, can't stand them in the moment. That's not what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm saying, though, that tune into your emotional state. If you've got, let's say, let's say friends in this example – who maybe in the past, you guys really clicked, you got along, it was effortless, but maybe you've changed over the years. And maybe now being with them is uncomfortable. Maybe now being with them is kind of draining. If you're the person who's, let's say, ambitious and going after it and trying to expand and grow, and they're not about that. Nothing wrong with that, but that's their choice. But when you know that you don't feel good when you're in their presence, it could be something to pay attention to, that maybe I don't want to be in this person's presence as much doesn't mean I need to kick them out of my life. I can still love them to death, but just not want to spend as much time with them because it's not conducive to the life I'm creating. And when it comes to like an intimate relationship, if anyone's listening to this, maybe you're upset with your partner in this moment and you're hearing me say this, A, if you do love them and you want to make the relationship work, this moment, this hardship, it's going to pass, but you bring attention to it. You communicate from a loving space. You communicate effectively and you work through it. And every time you do that, the relationship deepens. Every time you do that, you feel more connected. And if uh, the proof of that is anyone can experience it, you probably all have. You think about a time in your life where there was something that was on your mind, it was on your heart, it was kind of uncomfortable, and you wanted to talk about it, it was important, but you've been holding back for a long time because you thought the other person would get upset or whatever the case may be. And then you have the conversation finally, and you do it as well as you can from a loving and authentic place and a respectful place. And they hear you and you guys communicate well. And at the end of the, the, the conversation, you feel great and you feel like you bonded. You feel so much more close. And so think about that. Like hardships are and triggers are a gateway into a deeper connection. But if we treat them like the problem and we avoid them, you're keeping the relationship pretty, pretty superficial. Mm. Well, it sounds like right there, what you're talking about is building that like line of communication where no matter if it's going to be a hard thing going on in life or it's just great stuff happening in life, you're communicating with your partner or not just your partner, but your friends, your family, because that's where the growth and that's where relationships really are nurtured. Yeah, because think of it like this. Nobody gets angry for no reason and nobody gets angry in an instant. If somebody's angry, there was a lot that went into that that built up to that anger. So as an example, you know, one example I think about, there you are, you're living with your partner and your partner grew up in a house, let's say that the kitchen was always really clean. 
and you are somebody that maybe you didn't grow up in that kind of environment. So you happen to leave all your stuff in the sink and you don't think much about it. Oh, it'll get done. I'll, I'll do it tonight or it'll get done eventually. And even if it got done tomorrow, like you're okay with that because that's what happened when you were growing up. But your partner really likes a clean kitchen. So then he or she tells you, honey, you know, it really bothers me when you leave the sink or like looking like this. Could you not do that anymore? And then she communicated or he communicated and they tell you, uh, you say, yeah, sure, no problem. But maybe you were kind of distracted. Maybe you thought they didn't really mean it. Whatever story you tell yourself, you don't change. So then tomorrow, the same thing happens. And they go, you know, honey, you didn't do it again. And then a week goes by and then a month goes by. And each time the frustration grows each time and everyone's got a different fuse. So it might take longer or shorter, but mm -hmm. at some point an argument happens. And if you have been fairly unconscious as the person w okay with the dirty kitchen, you'll look at them like, Whoa, like, why are you overreacting? What is this? Like, why are you so angry? Where did this even come from? Because you're completely oblivious to the fact that they've been asking you for this for a week or for a month or 36 times, you know? And then from that place, you can see that their anger built up from them being slightly really frustrated. And then before that, it was moderately frustrated. And then it was slightly <laughs> frustrated. And then it was like annoyed. And then it was like, you know, they noticed it. But throughout that process, there could have been communication. Now, the person originally might think they're communicating by saying, you know, Honey, I uh, I noticed that the sink was kind of a mess, and you know I really do appreciate a clean kitchen. Could you know? Could we talk about that? And the other person's like, Oh yeah, yeah, I, I hear you. But they're like watching TV, or they're on the phone, or they're kind of distracted. And that's the signal to go. Assuming you wait until they're ready, and it's like, Hey, could you repeat back to me what you heard me say? Oh yeah, you told me that you know every now and then you want the kitchen clean. No, no, no that's not what I said. <laughs> It's like I find when I'm mediating relationships, oftentimes people will reach out to me because they're having issues in their marriage or in their, their dating. And I'll have, if you know, when, when I was in Arizona, I was doing it in person. Now I do it over Zoom. But when it was in person, here I am with this guy and this girl. And I'll say to the, the, the woman, you know, please tell me you know, from your perspective, what's going on? And then she'll tell me everything. And then before I have the guy reflect what he has to say, I want him to first tell me what she said. I want to make sure you heard that. This was, he's right there. You know, he heard everything. And immediately he says, this is what she said. And it's not what she said at all. <laughs> and it's like, all right, this is why we do this. This is why we have these mediations. Because if it's just you two, one says something, it's like one is speaking English and the other one starts speaking Spanish. Like, like that's why you're having a disconnect. So in that same way, you want to improve communication, just make sure you're both on the same page. Make sure that... It's you both know that sometimes I hear something and it's not what you said. And sometimes you you hear things and it's not what I said. It's nothing personal. It's nothing bad or wrong. It just it is what it is. Sometimes I'm more distracted. Sometimes I'm a little in my head. Sometimes I heard part of what you said, but not all of it. But I was kind of busy. So I just imagined I heard all of it. <laughs> and my brain <laughs> filled in the blanks. That happens. And the more you communicate that, the more you're on the same page, the more you kind of nip it in the butt so it doesn't get to anger. It only gets to the initial conversation. It gets to the annoyance. It gets to the minor frustration. Anytime there's anger, anytime there's rage, anytime there's any of these heavier emotions, that didn't happen in one shot. Like that's been building for a long time. Wow. I never really thought of it in that way because it's like you take the steps to communicate. I'm putting communicate in air quotes. And you think it's like, okay, I communicated. I did my job. That's that's that it's their job to change now, but it's really taking those extra steps and making sure that like everybody is on the same page. Like what is everybody hearing in this conversation? Because based on like the personal bias that we have, the way our brains work, what we're doing at the time, all these different things change what we're going to hear in that conversation. Yeah, And I think once you, and I think once you, uh, understand that like that's going to make communication so much more useful more powerful because you're going to actually get the results you're looking for if you guys are both on the same page yeah and to your point excuse me 
if I were to say, using what you said, you know, I communicated, it's done, I did my part, now it's like it's up to them to change. Well, my response might be, how do you know? And you might say, what do you mean? How do you know it's done? How do you know you did your part? Well, because I said it. Okay, how do you know they heard it? And it's like, how do you know they understood you? And it's like, you don't. And so unless you clarify it, you don't know. You know, and there's oftentimes mis miscommunications and misunderstandings, and that's what it's based on. I thought you said something that you didn't say. You know, so so then you and I are arguing, but we're living in completely different worlds. I'm confused why you're angry, because given what I thought you said, it doesn't really make sense that you're angry. And you're angry because what I thought you said is not what you said. <laughs> <laughs> uh, have you read the book? Extreme Ownership by Jocko. I have it. I have not read it yet, but I'm aware. I've seen TED Talks of it and stuff, so I'm aware of the concept. Yeah, because the second I started taking those concepts and applying it to relationships and just taking ownership over it all, that's where I saw a huge just change. Because when you're putting the ball in somebody else's court, you don't have any control. But as long as you keep control, or I guess control is not the right word here but as long as you're maintaining ownership over like what's happening and the results mm. that's when you can make these course corrections like we're talking about to communicate better yeah but like the example i just gave that was uh no ownership there like mm. i did my part now it's on you there's no ownership yeah, and yeah. so you're not going to be able to actually course correct or make the changes needed without that yeah, and it's also, you know, it, I don't, and sometimes people misunderstand this aspect right here where it's not you're with someone for the next 70 years and every single time you say something, you ask them to repeat back what, what you said, <laughs> right? That, that might get irritating after a while. It's more you both come from that same place because you, you talk about it in the way that we're talking about it now that miscommunications happen. And mo often when there's miscommunication, on top of the miscommunication or the misunderstanding, we also then don't clarify. We don't ask, we don't take the ownership. Hey, I think I know what you meant, so I'm just going to roll with it. Versus, I think I know what you meant, but I could be wrong. Let me clarify that. Hey, honey, I heard you say this, but I want to make sure that's what you said. Oh, yeah, that's what I said. Awesome, cool. But there's times where they go, oh, no, 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 I said this. Yep, that's why I asked. I thought I missed something. You know, it's like, it's good to just check in. Maybe your partner was a little bit distracted. Notice it. Be aware. You know, assuming that you're in the same house, let's say, not like on, even if they're on the phone, you can hear it in their voice. You can see it in their body language. You can see it in their eye contact. Are they doing five other things? Are they somewhat distracted? Are they, are, do they have a habit of not really paying attention? Then, you know, it's case specific, how often you do it, how you do it, the way you word it. It doesn't always have to sound like an interrogation. And that's never the, the intent. <laughs> and I have to say... The less it sounds like an interrogation, the better results you're going to be getting. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. No, like if you were to just say something like, hey, um, you know, just as an example, you guys have a conversation and you say, hey, I want to, first and foremost, I want to preface this. I believe, and I've seen it work out in my own relationship and with my clients, what you appreciate appreciates. So let's say you tell your partner something and they do it. And then you might say to them, Hey, I just want to let you know, it really meant the world to me when I asked you to do this thing or to try this out or to whatever, and you did it so beautifully and it was just amazing. I felt heard and I felt seen and so loved by you. Thank you. I really appreciate that. You know, And just saying that makes the other person it, – it, it works on multiple levels. On the one hand, it's like, oh, wow, I did a good job. You know, It's like I want, I want to do more of that. Because not only does it feel good to be praised, because it means like, yeah, I did well, and this is my partner that I love, and I want them to think that about me, but I also love them, and I like making them feel good as much as I can. And so, oh, wow, me just doing what I said I was going to do, me just kind of listening to them a little more than I used to, what, what a change, you know? And now all of a sudden, that's the same thing with no interrogation. It's coming from appreciation. And so when you come from love, when you come from respect, when you come from asking for what you want and what you need, but again, not from a, you're not giving it to me, you're not doing it, but from more of just a conversation of, can we make it work? You know, it's you and me versus the problem, not me versus you. 
there's not adversarialness in this. Mm. I really like that when you take the when you take that divide out between you guys and put your put each other on the same team in any relationship. I know this uh, this really applies deeply to like romantic relationships, but when you take that divide out and put each other on the same team, you're going to get so much more results. And if you're you had the mindset going into it that like it's me versus you. Who's going to yeah. win this? Yeah, yeah. So. I'm imagining like, so let's say you're in your, your living room and you've got, let's say, more than one couch. So you've got at least two. And you're on one and the other person's on the other and they're facing each other. That's already adversarial um, positioning. You and I are facing each other, like head on. Like that is adversarial in nature. And so let's say that um, more of a, cooperation team is side by side. And so now let's say in the, you're right in front of me conversation and you and I are together. I just say, you know, when you keep doing this thing and every time you do that, I feel this and I feel I'm making it about me and I'm blaming you. I'm like, there's no understanding. There's no ownership. I'm just blaming you for how I feel. And I'm letting you know how I feel. And that doesn't feel good to receive. But now let's say, we're side by side and we're holding hands and I let you know by prefacing it, you know, I, you are the most important person in my life and I love what we have. And I, I, this has been something on my mind that's been bothering me and I'd love your help with this because I think it'll help us to dive deeper and deepen our relationship. Are you open to that? And he or she's like, Oh, absolutely. And it's like, yeah. So I noticed that I have been, I'm making it about me, not them. I've been feeling a little insecure. I've been feeling upset because I'm noticing something coming up for you. Yeah, that that exact statement right there that I I feel this rather than you did this. Like that mm-hmm. statement right there changes everything. Yeah. But continue on. Can you continue your thought before you forget? Nobody, <laughs> nobody wants to feel blamed, you know? It's like whether it's an intimate relationship or not, everybody wants to save face. Everybody wants to look good. Nobody wants to be blamed. It doesn't mean it's not like it, it doesn't mean don't take responsibility. If you did something, you know, own it. But at the same time, here's this person that you love, that you say you love, is the communication that you're about to say loving? Or is it kind of hurtful? And if it's hurtful, you know, you only depend everyone's different, but you only have so many of those conversations before things don't end well. And, you know, oftentimes there's relationships that they start well, and some, some of them don't even start that well, and then they continue into it, but the communication never improves. Both partners kind of hold something back. They don't feel heard. They don't feel understood. And then one of them maybe is a little bit more dominant than the other, so the other one kind of keeps quiet. And then you just have a dissatisfied couple. You've got both people that aren't fully satisfied, both people that don't fully understand their, their partner, and they don't really communicate, and, and that's not to say they don't try Oftentimes, like even like the one who's not as dominant might try very often, but the way they're communicating it and the way the other person's receiving it, it just doesn't land. And then so they feel, what's the point, you know, and they get defeated about it. And so again, communication I found is at the heart, it's at the root of not only, I'd actually probably go as far to say that communication is at the root of every single problem that you've ever had. Because it's also your communication with yourself. So communication is at the the heart of everything. It could be a miscommunication with your partner in a relationship. It could be with your friends. It could be with business partners or clients. But it can also be, you know, you had a a, a intuitive hit, a gut feeling that something wasn't the right thing for you and you ignored it. And then that bothered you later. And then it caused a lot of problems for you. Well, that's a problem that you're experiencing because of a lack of communication with yourself. And so I'd say a yeah, lack of communication is at the root of everything. Wow. One more thing. Going back to the I feel statement that we were just talking about. And then I want to talk about a couple other things. But one last thing I want to say on that is you notice when you say I feel, you're not questioning your partner's intent. Uh-huh. Because when you blame somebody, you're like making it seem like they tried to hurt you. But 
if you're in a healthy relationship, nine times out of 10, the other person's not trying to hurt you. Like you guys are on the same side or you should be at least. And you got a whole nother set of problems if they're out there trying to hurt you. Yeah. But if you assume like using the I feel statement and phrasing it like that, then you're like, hey, this is what happened. I know. But you're phrasing it in a way that's like, I know you didn't try and hurt me, but yeah. this is how it made me feel rather than why would you do that to me? <laughs> yeah. The example that comes to mind when you said that, I've seen this with some friends in the past and clients that I've been doing like certain couples that I've worked with where let's say it's a girl and a guy and let's say the guy was very friendly with, with with another girl, but he Mm -hmm. didn't like mean anything by it. There is nothing going on, but because there's not really a lot of communication going on, his girlfriend or his fiance or his wife sees it and starts assuming what's going on. Right. Yeah. So if she immediately goes to like, he's cheating on me or something like that, it's going to be adversarial because the conversation will be something like, Hey, I saw you with her. Who's she? And behind that, you can hear it in the voice. I got to change my face and everything. It's like mm-hmm. behind that voice, there's this implication that I did something wrong that like, sh- I'm not supposed to have a friend because you have no idea who this is. And be- and, and because of that, I'm going to maybe get defensive immediately going, you don't trust me? You know, see, immediately that might come from the tone that she used in this example. But let's say the two of them have sit down and, and it starts with what I said before. I have something on my mind, on my heart I want to share with you. I think it'll really help us deepen our relationship. Can we talk about that? Yeah, sure. I, I, I noticed that over the last few weeks, I've been feeling really insecure whenever I see you talking to her. And I know, you know, I love you. I trust you. I know that there's nothing going on. And I think maybe something in my past, maybe a previous relationship, maybe something with my parents, because maybe my dad cheated on my mom or something. Maybe that's getting triggered right now. And I'd love to just talk about it, you know. And then all of a sudden, he's like, oh, yeah, you know, she's actually helping me buy you a gift because I don't know what to get you. And, you know, she's really good with that. (laughs) you, You never know what it is. Now, sometimes that isn't to say sometimes he is cheating on you, right? So, but either way, this way of communication is your best bet. This way of communication is how you get to the bottom of what's actually going on where the other person and you are on the same team. If you don't do that in the first example I gave, you know, who's she? Now, all of a sudden, she's just a friend, but all of a sudden, I don't think you believe me. So now this this whole conversation just like tanked because now I start thinking, you don't trust me. Like we don't have trust. Like you, without trust, we're nothing like all that kind of stuff. And now the relationship like unravels quickly in that moment. And then we start getting into an argument about things that had nothing to do with this. But when you always assume positive intent because you love the person and you know, as you said, the vast majority of the time, they don't mean you any harm. And the vast majority of the time, it's not what you think it is. And the vast majority of the time, it's, it's the worst case scenario that you've got going in your head. Isn't actually what's going on. Now, sometimes it is, and that's a whole different conversation. But when it's not, be careful making the assumption that it is and entering into a conversation like that, because that uh, doesn't bode well. Yeah. The second you put that assumption on somebody else, then uh, you're really going to be testing that relationship. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So we've been talking about communication, making sure that you're clarifying, appreciating, and then like the I feel statement, what other aspects of building relationships or what other tools would you say are like crucial? So when you're in a relationship, so when you, uh, uh, the answer that I was going to give has to do with more of like an intimate relationship. Is that what you mean? Yeah, we can yeah. go. Yeah. So any, any type of relationship you want. Yeah. <laughs> so this applies to all of them, but in a, in this context, yeah, it applies to all of them. You want to be making sure that you're going in a similar direction, not the same direction that that's not required. You know, if you want to be a, uh, you know, you want to be some entrepreneur who is like creating their own business and doing all this great stuff. And your partner doesn't have to also want to be an entrepreneur. Your partner can want to do something else, but are they supportive of what you want to do? 
are you both moving in a similar direction? In the same way that with the friends we talked about, if you outgrow them and they're not growing, then you're not growing anymore when you're with them and you're going to start to resent them. So if you're in a relationship, and let's say we say it's two people for the sake of this conversation, two people come together and they're brought together in a sense, my belief, let's say for a reason. There's some lesson that each one is going to learn from the other. There's some growth that their soul is going to have because of that experience. Now, some people are brought together forever, but some people are brought together. People can see my hands. I'm just kind of bringing my hands together, but sometimes they part. And so sometimes you come together for a certain period of time. It could be weeks. It could be months. It could be years. It could be decades, but it doesn't mean it's going to be forever. And that's not a problem. You know, sometimes you come together for a period of time and then you grow apart. And that's beautiful too, because then that next person that comes into your life is ready for who you are now and you're ready for who they are now. And that's your next level of, let's say, expansion and growth, but you wouldn't have been ready for them without the first person. So everything in life is like a stepping stone. And, but again, sometimes that person is forever, but keeping in mind that one of the ways you stay forever, if that's what you want, is if two people come together, they have similar values they want similar things, they're moving in a similar direction, and they're growing at a similar rate. And if you have all that, you're probably going to be together forever. It's when one person stops wanting it, the values are out of alignment. You know, if my life's dream is to live in Canada, and your life's dream is to live in Mexico, you know, that's not going to work. One of us is going to have to, you know, sacrifice on that. Now you could make it creative, you know, six months we're there and six months we're here. Right? But if my goal <laughs> is like all 12 months, I want to live in Canada and yours is all 12 mm-hmm. months. You want to live in Mexico. Then either one of us is going to be okay, not living where we said we want it. And that could work or it could breed resentment. It's going to be case dependent or that could lead to a lot of issues. And so if you know that, you're probably better off being with somebody who wants to live where you want to live and or you were okay living where they want to live. You know, there's got to be that similar direction, values, and and, grow, and growth rate. What do you think about that? Well, it seems like even this comes back to communication mm-hmm. because in a healthy relationship, if you communicate all these things beforehand, then say you're together and you decide to get married, keep moving farther and farther into the relationship. If you're honest about what you wanted before, before you went down this path, you're going to get much better results Mm -hmm. rather than look at, look at where we're at at this point, like a 50% divorce rate couples being more unhappy than ever. Like these are, these are things that are seem to be results from not communicating. Yeah, and when I said earlier that every problem, no matter where it's what uh, area of your life, is from miscommunication, it also applies to. We said if you're wearing that mask, what are you communicating? Well, you're not communicating who you are, so you're miscommunicating, and that miscommunicating is going to lead to that problem eventually. And like you just said, when you're up front, hey, this is what I'm all about. This is where I'm headed. This is what I really want out of life. This is all, these are my dreams. This is what I would love to experience. I want to travel the world. You being with a partner that wants to live in the middle of Wisconsin and never leave, <laughs> that not, that's not going to work. Like you're going to have some issues with that. Now, it doesn't mean your partner's got to love to travel as much as you do, but is he or she open to it? Mm. You know, I don't have to like football, but if my partner loves football, And when she or he is watching football, they're ecstatically happy. I love seeing them ecstatically happy. So I'm going to watch football with them, at least occasionally, just to enjoy being in their presence while they're so lit up. And I'll remain open-minded and I might be open to liking football, right? But it's different if, no, I'll never watch football. I hate football. And I'm, uh, you're always going to watch it on your own. You know, but if they want a partner who'd watch it with them, that's taking away from the relationship. You know, so again, it's just you don't have to have everything in common. And it's usually better when you don't. You know, there's differences. <laughs> there's um, lessons that each one of you teaches the other. There's experiences that each one of you sparks in the other that you wouldn't have done otherwise. You expand because this person is different. But at the same time, despite the differences, that the values, what you want out of life, like those 
I use need in, in quotes, but those like need to be in alignment if you want this to sustainably work out at the highest level. No, that totally makes sense because when you're out of alignment and all this stuff, like that's where all the community or that's where all the problems are coming from. Like you said before, yeah, I never quite linked communication in my head to all this, but once you really start thinking about it, it's crazy how much stuff that communication is linked to and how many problems it's just making just by not communicating. Yeah. I mean, everyone here can imagine the problems that a couple would have when they've been together, let's say for three years, four years, five years, and let's say they're considering getting married and they're getting ready to do that. And then at that point, one of them finds out that the other one's dream is to have a family and have kids and, and the other one doesn't want to have kids. That might've been something that was good to discuss <laughs> early on. Not necessarily like a first date or something, but it's like, as you get to know somebody, you get curious, you know, what, what kind of life would you love to experience? Like, what are your dreams? What are your goals? That would have come out. <laughs> that would have been there if it was that important to them. And that's where you get to decide, all right, I'm with this person. They really want this thing. Do I want to be with them to the point where I'm willing to do that thing too? But don't do it resentfully. Like, don't say, yeah, I guess I'll force myself to do it. That's not going to be in your highest interest right there. If you're going to do it, like, do it. If you're going to do it, you go all in. If you're going to do it, you actually find a way to enjoy it. Because if you do that, the relationship's really good. But if your partner feels like they're dragging you along because you don't want to do it and they know that, but you're doing it anyway for them, that doesn't feel good. That feels like I'm forcing you to do this. You know, and I said earlier, does the relationship feel, you know, effortless? Does it feel easy? Is there a flow? If you're not in alignment and you're not communicating well, it's not going to feel in flow most of the time. If you are in alignment most of the time, it'll feel pretty good. Will you have your disagreements? Yeah. Will you, will you have your miscommunications? Of course. But the better you get at communicating, the less often that happens. Now, just saying, I know couples that have been together for five years, 10 years, they haven't argued once and they're so in love. And then other people say, oh, you know, um, the, uh, you know, we, we argue massively. We had our first big fight and it's been a month and a half into the relationship. That's not necessarily like necessary. It doesn't have to happen. It's based on miscommunication. And when you've got one or both people that have maybe even studied communication, have took some time to consider how am I communicating, take ownership of that and come from that place of making it as clear as possible, the amount of fights you have, the amount of disagreements you have, the amount of arguments you have, they drop down to the point where you either never have them or you practically never have them. Now, that doesn't mean that you don't disagree on things. But you and I can have a really loving, civil conversation where I think A and you think B, and that's cool. But you and I are still holding hands and we're still on a team. And we're still getting clear on, so what's best for us? Not me or you, us. What's the best thing for us right now? Oh, maybe, maybe what you suggested is better at this moment than what I said. Let's do that. There's no argument. Everything's good. But people jump into these disagreements and the disagreements from this lack of communication or miscommunication, misunderstanding leads to a lot of those challenges that they face later on as they grow. Well, I think this goes back to exactly what we were talking about at the very beginning of the show, which is being strong and in yourself first, building your integrity. Because if you have that integrity, you have that confidence in yourself you have the confidence to cut people out that you know won't serve you or don't align with you. And then how many of these problems you can avoid mm -hmm. by just not having to deal with them in the first place. Yeah. You know, like for example, this is a, you know, I know a lot of, a lot of your podcast centers around health. Same thing applies to health. Disease doesn't just happen. It's been building up for usually years, depending on the disease, but most of them for years, even decades. And so if and when you get something in terms of a formal diagnosis, doctor says, hey, you got this, that didn't just happen. That wasn't an accident. You know, there was a lot of life choices that went into creating that. There's environmental toxicities and all these kind of things that went into creating that. It's the exact same thing in relationships. Any problems that you have, that didn't just happen. Like there's been months and years and decades going into that to create it. Yes, that's. 
what we talk about on the show all the time is that these problems that are coming up, they're these are just like the surface level problems. Like these day to day problems, they're all surface level. If you don't get to the root of the actual problem, then guess what? You'll like fix this one and then the next day you'll come back and like a weed, it's back and it's bigger than ever. And yeah, so yeah. if you don't actually fix the root of the problem, just like in your health, like for instance, with diabetes, we know we now know that most diabetes is caused by lifestyle factors such as diet, stress levels, lack of exercise. And so if you don't actually address those root problems, how can you expect to, act, to have those get better? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so from a relationship perspective, the equivalent of that diabetes metaphor you just used might be something like, okay, what's the root problem of my relationship challenges right now? Well, I haven't lived as my word in the last seven years. I consistently don't do what I say I'm going to do. Kind of goes along with what I just said. I, I don't really surprise him or her anymore. I don't really ask with genuine curiosity and interest about how they're doing and what their day is like. I kind of just ask. I don't really ex- I share with them how much I love and appreciate them, even though I do, because I just make the assumption that I've said it before and they know. You know, it's like all these kind of things and there's so many other things I could put together are what's causing the problem, you know? And if we don't change, our relationship won't change. If we don't change, our life won't change. I always tell people, it only takes one person to change your relationship. Because when you change, the person in relation to you will change also. Now, I can't say to what extent they'll change. You can't force someone to change. You can't force someone to behave in a different way. But you change the relationship by changing yourself. You trying to change your partner is going to push them further away. Have you heard of the book Eight Dates? Eight Dates? No, I haven't. So it's written by uh, two couples and the Gottmans and the oh, yeah. Abrams. I, I know that. I know the and, Gottman. And so they came together and they wrote this book and it's eight dates and it's all are each data sent around different topics that are like crucial for making a relationship work. So one's about finances, one's about the idea of fun, one's about like intimacy. And so each topic is like something that needs to be addressed. And so the whole point of the book is to get couples like on the same page before they push the relationship farther. Mm. And it's an, absolutely amazing book for exactly what you're talking about is making sure you and your partner on on the same page because this is like an amazing way to just open up those lines of communication because you haven't been communicating for a while it can be hard to hard to start but this is like an amazing resource to get started in my opinion yeah and for people listening and kate because this just popped into my head so in case anyone else is thinking this it's not that you're like going to your first date with a checklist of questions and you, <laughs> it's not an interview. You know, it's not that. You just have in mind, what are the things that I would love to know about this person? You bring your genuine curiosity, playfulness, presence to the moment. You'll figure out if this is the person for you. You'll figure out if, and that doesn't mean they're the person for you forever. No one knows that. But you'll figure out if they're the person for you for right now. You'll figure out like, do I want to go on another date with this person? Is this somebody that I'd like to spend more time with or less time with? And then as you ask genuinely interested questions about what they want out of life and all these things and what they're all about and what they're passionate about and dreams they might have and maybe you dive into some fun things from the past and what they're kid, you know, you have fun with it. But the point being, it can be really fluid and natural and organic and work out really well. Well, one thing that it's kind of along the lines of making a checklist, but one thing my grandpa actually taught me a couple years ago is just to have 10 things that are non-negotiable for you. Like 10 things out of a relationship or out of a partner that no matter what, you know, you want. Yeah. And so it makes it super easy as you start talking to people of just kind of keeping your eye out for these 10 things and make sure that this person is going to make you happy in the long run because then that takes a lot of the guesswork out of it. Yeah. When I'm working with some of my clients who are dealing with more relationship challenges, whether because they came to me for that or because that just showed up in the middle of our work, 
I get clear mm-hmm. on what are those non-negotiables. I get clear on usually it's more when they're looking to get into a relationship than when they're already in one. But when they're looking to yeah. get into one, you know, what do you really want in in your relationship? But what do you well, what don't you want? Like that's important too. Because when you recognize what the non-negotiables are, you'll see when that barrier has been crossed. And when you see that, you'll be able to say, hey, you know, that's not okay. And then do something yeah. about it. You know, I heard, I heard a mentor say, oftentimes the thing that ends a relationship, we could have noticed on the first date, but we didn't pay attention to it because we didn't want to see it. Wow. So you see the thing that eventually a year later, eight months later, whatever it is, maybe breaks it up. And you noticed it actually the first time. So one example might be you break up with uh, this person because they're really rude to like all your friends and all these people and they treat like, you know, people like garbage. And on the first date, that person treated the waiter like crap. Mm. And you noticed it and maybe it bothered you. But you thought, no, 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 like, you know, I'm sure the person's a great person and I'm sure that, you know, um, that, you know, wh- whatever the case may be, we justify it and then we stay in the relationship. And then that keeps happening. But it's like, well, I'm already here. So we kind of like every, there's other things that I like. There's other things that are good and we stay in it. And at some point it might get to a point where we're not willing to tolerate that anymore. But we noticed it in the beginning. And just like with anger, it doesn't just happen. It builds up. The thing that people sometimes joke, it's like in the beginning, the things that you fall in love with the other person for that are like little idiosyncrasies, the things that are unique about them, the things that are really different and maybe even a little bit odd that you love about them. At some point, if you're having issues in the relationship, those are the things that annoy you the most. (laughs) And it's like, those are the things that you love so much in the beginning. Like what happened? And yeah, so it's like when you notice something and you communicate it, And again, not from a place of attacking, not from a place of making them wrong, not from assuming that they meant harm. As a teammate who wants the best for the team and wants the best for us and is thinking about both of your well-beings, that is usually received very well. And the more you can communicate from that place, the better your relationships get, in my experience. I love that. Okay, Jamil, we're coming close on time. What would be like one last little bit of information to just up-level relationships that you had? Hmm. Raise your level of commitment to every relationship in your life that you care about. I just said before, it only takes one person to change a relationship. If I told you, I'm going to make this an extreme example just to hit the, you know, so the point gets hit home and it's extreme because you can apply it then for everything else. If I told you the person that you love most in this world was going to pass away in 90 days and you can't tell them that and you can't hint it at all, all you could do if you wanted to was make the 90 days as beautiful as possible. And if you were to raise your level of commitment and say, this is the most important thing in my life right now to make this person's next 90 days as beautiful as possible. Now, what would change if you did that compared to what you normally do? Well, if you're most people, what you normally do is you buy into the lie that you have time. So you tell yourself, I'll have that person for the rest of my life. So I don't need to like treat them, you know, like, like it's the end or like it's almost the end. But how do you know? And it goes full circle, just like what we said in the beginning. How do you know they don't? Because if I told you, think about this. If I guaranteed you, your partner has got 90 days to live and your job is to make it as special and possible, special as possible, fulfill their dreams, like bucket list, like all that great stuff. That is actually a better deal than you already have. I gave you a guarantee that you've got three months. Right now, you don't have any guarantee. Right now, they could be dead tomorrow. And so... If I said, oh, you have a year to live, that's better than your current odds. Like you don't know how much time you have right now. And so again, if if you could do anything, imagine your partner is going to be gone in 90 days and your job is how can I send them on their way 
in the most beautiful fashion of love and excitement and how can I really get that love across and now do that in like 90 day blocks for the rest of your relationship. And if you just did that, you, every relationship problem you can imagine is going to either lessen, disappear, and the passion, the love, the everything, it's just going to go through the roof. Wow. I think it really just comes back to keeping life in perspective of we don't have all the time we think we do. Mm -hmm. We truly don't. And if I know I, I get caught up in the day to day all the time and just not understanding like, Hey, I'm not going to live forever. I'm not going to have everybody around forever. What can you do to make this day count? Yeah. Make the people around like, to connect with the people around you because who knows what's going to happen tomorrow. Yeah. I've had, I had a person, this was a client a long time ago. I was talking to him and, he, and when he came to me, he didn't like what he was doing. He's been doing it for like five, 10 years. He was in his thirties. And so his perspective was, well, I don't like this, but you know, it pays well. So I'm going to stay in this until I retire. And I said, all right, well, when are you planning on retiring? Oh, probably, you know, like 65 ish. Like, okay. So first of all, you're making a lot of assumptions here that you're going to live another 35 years and you're going to do it while like hating 70% of your week or whatever number that is that you're working all the <laughs> hours. And then you're also playing this big roulette like gamble thing that after you retire and now you can finally have fun that you're going to also have an extensive period of time on the back end when the evidence shows that at least with men, what happens to most men within five years of retiring? They die. And an aspect of that, one, it's the age and the chronic disease levels and all that kind of stuff, but it's also almost like a lack of purpose. It's kind of like I spent all this time doing stuff and now I'm just kind of sitting around, right? And so my invitation is stop waiting. Stop waiting to love in a relationship. Stop waiting to live in your life. Live now and love now. Because you don't know about tomorrow. You don't even know about the next moment. You've got this moment now. So make it count. Wow. Absolutely love that. Jamil, where can everybody find you? <laughs> Thank you, man. This was such a beautiful conversation. I love like the off the cuff. We just kind of have a conversation and it's beautiful. Whatever comes in the moment. It's awesome. I hope that everyone who is listening or at least one person, I'll, I'll put it that way. I, at least <laughs> one person who heard this, I hope that something stuck and it'll shift the, the quality of the relationship that you either attract into your life or that you have right now. And so if anyone would like to kind of connect with me, learn more about my work and how I support people, there's a few different ways. If you're into like, you know, content and that kind of stuff, there's videos, blogs, podcasts, all that's on my website, my social media. I'll get all the links to Trevor, but on Instagram, it's at Dr. Jamil Syed, D-R, and then my name. And then Facebook is just my name, Jamil Syed. Website is jamilsayed.com. There's four to four to 500 videos, all free, short, powerful. People have told me it's really helped them out, and that's been a blessing for me, and that's why I keep making them. And that's all on offer for you as well. And if you have any challenges in your current relationship, you want to get into a relationship, but you want to make sure it happens the quote-unquote right way, I'd be more than happy to have a conversation with you, see if I can support you. You can find that on the, uh, the website. And if you also have challenges in your business, challenges in your mindset, you want to be happier, you want to be more fulfilled, you want to feel truly alive again, let's talk. I think we can uh, make some magic happen. Oh, yeah. Like, well, all that stuff, first off, is going to be linked in the description. Second off, the podcast we did last time about three steps to your next breakthrough. You should go back and listen to that. I'll link that in the bio too, or the description of this show, because Jamil just had three just amazing steps that you could take to make that next breakthrough and how to push your life forward. And I can't wait for you guys to go check him out because you just heard, you just heard an hour of him and he knows what he's talking about. He's worked with tons of people at this point and he's one of those people in my life personally that... I come back to for advice and I try and talk to him just every couple of weeks just because he's got such a good vibe about him and so lucky to call him a friend. So thank you for coming on, Jamil. I really appreciate it. And this is a great episode. 
Thank you, man. I appreciate and you. Remember, guys, like relationships, your health, they're all one and the same. If you want to lose fat, having a stressed out relationship is not going to serve you. Ditching your comfort zone, not having people around you that support you or people that are even bringing you down. Like you're not going to be able to get fully out of your comfort zone. And this isn't what we can have if our goal is to change a generation. That's what this show's about. If you like this show, share it with one person. That's all it takes. Like if you share this with one person, this movement grows. We affect more people. We get this message out there. We start having some healthier relationships and maybe. We look down the road a little bit and the divorce rate's not 50 plus percent. That's just my idea. Seems like a much better world to me. All right, guys, have a great rest of your week. Thank you for being with us today. If this conversation served you, it would mean a lot if you left a review and shared this with anyone who may benefit. An Extraordinary Life Without Regret is available to you now. Choose it. It's your time.